Okay, I'm going to show you how I set up my ebb and flow system. I'm going to make a small one to grow watercress. I'm starting with just a simple frame. And there's my bucket down there. Now I'm lining the frame with some polyethylene film that I have, waterproof. I'm just stapling the frame down, making sure to put the staples either on the top or on the outside, just not on the inside because then it'll leak. And here's my basin. So I cut on the edge here and I've got staples along the top. Pretty simple. Here are some of the things I'm going to need. I've got a pump. It's just a small aquarium pump. And I've got tubing to go from the pump into the bath from underneath. So the pump's going to be down in the bucket. It's going to pump it up. I've got a, an air pump. The air tubing in a, a bubble thing to aerate the water inside the bath. That's really important to aerate the water. And then I've got some of these fixtures here. Like, So what I need to do is cut two holes. One goes like that and the other goes like that. So when it's, when it's pumping up it'll pump up through here and then this will take the overflow so that in case it pumps too long it won't overflow the basin. So I'll have this one on here and then this one it'll drain back through once it's done pumping. And a timer. It's important to have a timer so I'll plug the pump into the timer and I keep my electrical attachments up in the air so they don't get wet. And so the holes in the basin will be right above my bucket so that if I do have leakage um, it's not a big problem and I'm gonna use a piece of plastic underneath the polyethylene um, see I'll lift this up so you can see I don't have anything on the bottom just the bottom of the polyethylene so I need to kind of reinforce where I put the holes so I'm gonna put this plastic on the underside I tried using wood and different materials but it'll get really moldy so plastic would probably work better So here's a better look at the fixture I'm going to use, and I have two of these, one for the inflow and then one for the overflow, and they're the same size. And so here's the threaded part, so this is the part that has to go through. So I need to find a hole saw, it's just this size, no bigger, no smaller. And then uh, when I put it on, I'm going to seal it up good around these washers. In this case I'm just kind of figuring out as I go but so I cut the holes in my polyethylene but the plastic support on the shelf is not big enough these squares so I'm going to pull one of these shelves out and modify it so that it can still support this weight and fit um, these things underneath because this part has to fit. And then I'm going to seal it with, with some Ultra Black. That's what I have available. So. so in this case I just used my Sawzall and I cut out two sections. You can see in the in the greenhouse shelf right here. Then it gives me plenty of room but still gives me support over here. I think that's going to work just fine. And it's all plastic so it's not going to get all moldy. So here's the basic idea. They just fit right through there. This is my piece of plastic and these are my fittings. And I just, uh, I'm going to put some sealant on the top, on the basin side, and probably in between here. So down in the tank goes the pump and the aerator and 
the pump is plugged in to the timer here. The aerator is not. I don't want a timer on that. I want aeration all the time. And then I'm going to hook the tubing that goes, and I've modified the tubing here, but I've used this one before so I know it works. And then just this tubing goes from the pump up to the nipple on the bottom. Now my ebb and flow table is almost set up. I've got my bucket, my pump in there, my aerator. I'm going to wait to test the pump and wait for this RTV to dry on there. So I'm going to wait one day with that dry on there good before I test the pump. One thing I want to point out before I forget is you want to make sure that your basin is big enough to accommodate the volume that it'll need up above because otherwise it'll pump out all the liquid that's inside and dry out your pump. In the past I've had my table six feet long all the way down to the center of the greenhouse over there and a basin this size was just barely big enough but if a little bit of the liquid had evaporated inside say down to here then it wasn't enough and then it pumped out all the liquid down there and dried out the pump and ruined one of my pumps so while I'm waiting for that RTV to dry my next step is to um, I've got plenty of hydrogen all three of these big bins is full of it this is my growth media. It's clay pellets. And these are all cleaned and ready to go. And I've got these, these baskets, the grow pots, designed for hydroponic ventures. And I think these small ones would be perfect for growing watercress. So I decided to use the larger baskets because they're they fit in here perfectly. So I've got eight big baskets and two small ones. And it just fits in there just perfect. This is this is called hydrogen. This is like a it's just blown clay pellets. And I love these because they're reusable. I have a whole bunch that I've kept for years and years and this just keeps working. And the roots just grow down in there. And when you're all done, you can just shake them out and filter it out and clean up the hydrogen and reuse it. So now all I have to do is I want to get some nutritional broth type media stuff at the hydroponic shop to put in my bath and wait for that RTV to seal on there, test it out. And then I just have to, to get the, the height of this one just right so that, it, so that it fills these pots up just enough to get the roots but not too high. So I have an adapter on here that I can remove in different ways to, to lengthen and shorten this piece. And then this piece here just has a, a little filter on it to keep those hydrogen balls from falling in there because these are the perfect size they're clogging up my my tube in there and word on the growth media and I'll say this again later is I know that for different plants you want different amounts of nutrition and for watercress you want low nutrient solution so I'm going to use half of what people would use for other plants Another word on growth solution, I know a lot of people like to use compost tea, just compost tea for watercress because it's not super strong. And I've got these vegetables out on my deck and I've got these basins underneath and I think those would be perfect because this is really nice soil in here and the water's just been running through and draining all the nutrients out. So I'm going to actually pour these into my basin under the hydroponic system. 
Okay, so now I filled up my bath with water and I'm going to let it sit for one day just to let the chlorine dissipate out of the water. And I've got my pump in there and it's all hooked up, so we're going to test out the pump. So, okay. Power here. And later I'm going to set up my timer, but right now I just want to test it. So let's hook it up. There's the water coming in here. And then when it gets up to here, it'll start draining back. So I want to see how long is it going to take to fill up to here. And that's why it's called ebb and flow. And over here, I bought some nutrient solution. And for watercress, I'm going to use half of the recommended amount. And then this is some kind of uh, bacteria that enzymatically breaks the phosphorus down so it's more usable for the plants. And they gave me that for free when I bought these. And this is the watercress. And with the watercress you see when you buy it, it already it still has the roots on. So I'm just going to transplant these into the hydrogen after this is all ready to go. But like I said before, I want to let the water um, dissipate the chlorine for a day first. So I'm just going to set this kind of in here. And maybe I'll get this a little more wet. Set this in here and let it just get used to the greenhouse. So here's the water coming up, still pumping up. I want to see. I want to see how deep it is in here when it gets to right to here. Okay, push the red back. Okay, so the, the water came up to the point where it's draining back into the basin underneath. And as you can see, the, the hydrogen is now kind of floating up. And that means that I don't have enough hydrogen. So I'm definitely going to fill these baskets all the way up. Because this thing, this drain pipe here is about as short as I can get it. So I either want to put something underneath to support these or just put more clay in there. See, like it's it's too deep for this one. These guys are going to float out. The plants are going to float away. I think it'll be okay for watercress, but I don't want this clay stuff to move around too much with plants in it. Cut. Okay, so one thing I want to do is I want to time how long it takes for it to pump all the way up because my pump is too strong and so it's pumping up here and then it's floating all this hydrogen so I'm gonna time it okay okay so it only took two minutes and 30 seconds for the pump to get the water up to the level that I wanted it so that's good so I'll set my timer accordingly but for now now it's time to put these guys into the, the hydrogen because we measured our our nutrient solution. So it was six mils per gallon with about 25 gallons. So that was 150 mils of 054 and then 100 mils of 501. So that's plenty of nitrogen for a watercress. It should be really happy. So we've got this watercress here. And I've never done this before, but I think I just want to try to get, break it apart and try to maintain the root structure. And I, don't, I think I want to rinse that. We need a bucket with water in it. Cut. So I got a bucket of water. I'm just rinsing the dirt off of the roots. Okay. I'm going to put this guy right 
in there like that. Let's see how it does. Next one. I don't have any idea how many of these I can do per basket. Maybe. This watercress grows roots from the stems too, so that that means I can bury them in there good. Oh, battery excuse. Okay, this part's a little complicated, but I brought my timer inside and my timer has 20 settings on it. So I made a schedule for 20 different feedings and set them into the timer. And since there's only 20 that I can do for a 24 hour period, I went ahead and gave um, 10 minute feedings each time and then just broke it down over 24 hours so I've got all my watercress planted they're not looking real great but these guys have little rootlets growing from them so I I think they're gonna be fine we'll see if it's not too cool outside for them I just don't know if this is all a big experiment Okay, it's about a month later. I'm not sure exactly how much long later I have to look, but as you can see, the watercress is, it it went nuts. I just put little bits in there, in each one, and I've been eating it regularly, almost every day. I'll, I've been cutting the ones that keep growing over the sides. I'm not sure what happens to them after I cut them. There's one that got. Mm -mm. But there's a lot of it there now, more than 10 times as much as what I planted only like a month later. Look down on the bottom, you can see the roots coming out down in the water. It's happy, happy stuff. And it's really tasty, it's really, um, really nutty it adds a really nice flavor it's a little bit actually it's bitter yeah but if you add it to other stuff put it in a smoothie it's really good and I haven't added any water to the ebb and flow because it's been cool and the thing is just working like a charm